What's up, punks? It's Shinobi, and this is episode 6 of Shy 256 So, I'm going to be taking a break from my incoherent rambling about meta layers and lightning and charm, and um, go into this interesting concept that uh, you know, a conversation with a buddy really kicked off in my head. And it's pr pretty much just the, the title of the episode. Uh, governments, Bitcoin miners, and shit you don't want to hear. Um, so we, we were kind of talking about interest um, bearing products and just the, that whole dynamic in, in a Bitcoin world denominated in Bitcoin and got to thinking about, you know, Bitcoin bonds. And, you know, that, that, that can be a pretty crazy thing. You know, if you run off and sell a bunch of Bitcoin bonds denominated in, in Bitcoin bearing interest and you don't have any Bitcoin, well, that's a recipe for, you know, confidence in your country just crashing to the ground and your economy imploding. But, you know, something really interesting uh, pops into the picture when you think about who actually could, you know, sell a Bitcoin bond. Who, who has predictable Bitcoin income? It's the miners. Like mining operations could actually sell, you know, bonds denominated in Bitcoin. And as long as they're not, you know, outcompeted and run out of business or lose a major chunk of their network share, um, you know, actually have predictable Bitcoin revenue to pay that out in the long term. And it's, it's really kind of interesting because there, there's two curves you can really think about that through. You can think about that right now mapping against the subsidy and, and the happenings and think, you know, if you are trying to sell a bond like this as a miner, right now it's probably stupid to think about anything except the subsidy as far as categorizing that as pretty high confidence Bitcoin income you're going to have in the future. And, you know, that'll kind of shift as the fee market matures and we get a much better idea of what, you know, predictable steady fee income looks like. And, you know, this kind of bond is, it would be priced and, and, you know, dealt with by the market differently depending on, you know, which point we're at. Are we trying this, you know, at the subsidy phase or the fee market phase? But, you know, this creates a huge motive for large nation states to make large mining operations because this is you know an actual stream of revenue that they can generate in terms of we can raise capital now and have something predictable in this this hard money bitcoin world to actually pay that off with you know down the line uh, as opposed to, you know, right now you're pretty much selling your fiat bonds, you know, bonds for other assets you may have holdings of, or taxing. And, you know, seeing as a lot of those things, you know, if, if things go our way, if we actually do see the world hyper Bitcoinized, like all of those are not going to be viable income options. But if you have a large mining operation, a Bitcoin bond structured like this is a viable option you have. And so if, if you are in a government somewhere around the world and are actually aware of and intelligent enough to start putting together what is coming, if, if this whole hyper Bitcoinization thesis is correct, you know, you would see this and you have a massive incentive to try to get a head start on this. Because if this happens, you know, you will be much more prepared to actually try and have this kind of system set up and this kind of product offered versus other countries in the world. And the really interesting part is if you get that head start and you start building that stockpile of Bitcoin before you let other countries know you're up to this, before you start actually selling these bonds, then if this starts becoming a thing, if, if countries start their mining operations to start selling Bitcoin bonds, yours are going to be more desired on the market because up to a certain point, you can go, I already have the Bitcoin to pay out these bonds, show proof of it, 
and all of the countries that didn't get a head start are just going to be trying to catch up, unable to make that guarantee, and therefore have a little less confidence in the ability for them to repay their bonds versus you, who can actually demonstrate, I have this Bitcoin up to like however many bonds I can issue before going over this collateral that I already have. And so any country that kind of puts this together and gets a head start on this is going to be in a very good position in this market if, if this whole situation were to really start playing out this way. And, you know, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's very, very popular in this space to think Bitcoin will completely kill all governments. And I've, I've said this whenever this topic comes up is, is a delusional idea. Uh, I think the most Bitcoin is going to do in that respect is financially starve larger governments and make it just financially unpractical to have a government that that's much larger than you know the local scale where it can actually be held accountable by the people who live there but you throw this kind of you know dynamic with this mining bond denominated in bitcoin the possible incentives for large nation states to start preparing for something like this potentially if that were to happen like i think this presents a route for a a decent amount of larger federal level governments in the world today to keep themselves alive in some slimmed down form in the long term if they're able to actually get a head start on this and you know, become a a dominant player in in some kind of Bitcoin bond market like this in the long term. And, you know, there's not, if that were to happen, I mean, there's not really much Bitcoiners can do about that unless you want to start talking proof of work changes and undermining the entire system. And, you know, speaking personally, that's absolutely unacceptable to me. And is that that's experiment has failed. But, you know, another aspect that comes into this is if, you know, some small set of of larger federal governments in the world were able to keep themselves alive like this, I mean, this introduces two really interesting, um, you know, aspects. I think, firstly, just the whole shift in, in just atmosphere as far as what does what does something like national security mean when you know the core of your your government's revenue is selling bitcoin bonds against its mining operation like your energy infrastructure you know your your energy output levels how how much natural resources do you have available to really produce power at levels necessary for this versus other countries who might do this you know what's the the potential of being out competed in that and the consequence that would have on confidence in your bonds like the, the time horizons it would take for you to pay them back if you don't get you know hit out of the market so hard that you are just unable to pay them back completely and you know that that kind of feeds into another aspect of this is that this is Even if this whole, you know, kooky, Shinobi's futurist uh, stoner thought plays out, then it it would result in a lot more market forces checking, you know, this scale of government. Because it's like, you know, your your bonds, like they're, they're denominated in Bitcoin. They're paid out in Bitcoin. So regardless of... You know, whether you're talking the subsidy schedule phase or a mature fee market phase, like the market is going to create a ceiling, you know, past which you're not going to be able to issue more bonds and and have the market actually desire those because it's publicly clear when you're starting to issue bonds past your ability to actually pay them off with your mining revenue. And so that that is just a huge market check that would be introduced in in this, you know, weird futurist scenario. And then, you know, the last kind of thing I really want to get into, you know, as far as just the the general thought vomit um, 
I think this really is at the end of the day, is think about two air quote countries. Because, I mean, I don't even really know if you could completely call them that in this situation. Um, you know, started getting outcompeted by another one and losing their, their share of the network hash rate. Well, hey, maybe those two air quote countries merge their bonds merge the liabilities for their two bonds together and you know through lengthening the time horizon at which they pay them off a bit maybe actually make good on those bonds in the end whereas otherwise they wouldn't have been able to like you you've now introduced uh you know through this whole structure an incentive that could lead to weird things like just the entanglement of two countries air quotes you know, financial matters to that core of a level just because the market has pushed them there and made that really the only viable option. And so, you know, it's just, you know, really, this is just kind of a random thought that uh, came out of the Dragon's Den I wanted to put out there for everybody. But on that note, adios, everybody. Uh, I will get back to my crazy meta layer rambling that's completely incoherent uh, as soon as I can. Adios.